Are we ready to talk about backstage adoption? Um, thank you. So, you know, brand new plugin uh, coming out on the marketplace everywhere. But um, so here's what happened. I was creating uh, the slides for um, this talk. And uh, at 2 AM, I got this brilliant idea. What if I create the slides inside backstage? You know, why not? Um, so this is real backstage. And uh, I, I, I created it in PX Create app, created a new plugin. And, and, and it looks good. I have a stepper, you know, which I can use for all the slides. Um, right? And uh, it turned out that it would be a great thing to do. Um, but there's this few problems that I ran into. First of all, if this is one plugin, and if I just show it from the side nav, if the URL is same, all the pages would highlight. Um, if you have seen, if you have noticed this, the sidebar in backstage highlights everything that starts with the same URL. So I had to create. I would have to create one plugin for each page. Should we do this? Um, this was a bad idea, and I spent three hours on this. I could have created good, good, good slides. And then I realized that you know it's time to give up. So, anyway, um, let's start the let's start the talk. Um, I'm Himanshu. Uh, I'm, I go by Orca Hunter on everywhere. And uh, um, welcome to my adoption deep dive. So this is me. I'm a product manager at Harness. Um, Harness does software delivery, um, but I take care of the internal developer portal product, which is powered by Backstage. And uh, previously, I've been an engineer and developer advocate for Backstage at Spotify. Um, so I've been doing this for about five years. And you can find me pretty much everywhere. <laughs> um, uh, recently, I did a three hour long Backstage setup video. Uh, because if you, if you really go out and Google how to create Backstage plugins, my four year old video shows up, and nothing works in that. Uh, so I still get messages like, hey, can you please help me out on backstage? And then, you know, you're, you're the most unhelpful person I've ever met. Uh, can you please remove the background music? It's so annoying. So I've started to realize that, yeah, you can try to be helpful. Um, it doesn't work out on social media all the time. So I created a new video. This talk, particularly, um, I just want to talk about three core things. One is, what's the mindset um, we need to adopt Backstage? How do we roll out? What are the different phases um, of rolling out Backstage? And what does a good golden path to adoption looks like? You saw my slide making thing earlier. That is also a use case of Backstage, but clearly not what it's designed for. So there is a golden path to Backstage adoption. Um, so before we talk about how to do adoption, I really so, so I was, I've been reflecting about this this year. I think there is a bit of confusion when it comes to backstage adoption. What does it really mean? And people say one thing, they think something else. Um, so there are two two main definitions of this, um, which I've come to realize. There is, when we talk about backstage adoption. It's an open source project. So we are saying, hey, instead of writing your own code in React, Node.js, or Django, something custom, you decided to use Backstage to build your developer portal. That is Backstage adoption. You chose not to write it on your own and not to go via, let's say, a proprietary vendor, which is not Backstage based, right? That is good for Backstage. That means you are now using the project. But once you have used the project to build your developer portal, now you're back to square one. Now you are the product owner of that developer portal for your internal customers. And now for you, adoption means something else. It doesn't mean I have a great catalog, I have, a, I have lots of workflows. And, and this, could, this is debatable, but we think it means daily developer utility. Another word, monthly active users, daily active users. 
and and you have to be maniacal about this because i've seen people agree to this definition 6 months down the line they put in all the hard work and they're like there's no uses but we're still adopting backstage we have things in our company no one's coming doesn't matter we have a great catalog lots of entity providers and processors and what not but those teams have been getting defunded lately so i'm that old in the backstage community that i've seen very excited adopters and now seeing them disappointed with what they have done so this is a very simple formula the success of your platform your developer platform your team and yourself depends upon this metric um i work at harness it's a software as a service company this is one of the hardest metric to pick as a saas company but we have picked it because we have realized any other metric we pick when it comes to renewal when it comes to actually asking the customer that hey are you are you realizing value if the developers are not coming in every single day it's not mission critical this will be the first thing that will get defunded so when you have a developer portal for your internal developers this is the same metric you need to follow so print this out put it on your okrs list or whatever you have this has to be a daily developer utility it's a hard metric it's a right metric to follow when we talk about adoption so we got that clear um i'll come back to that in 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 next backstage con and really ask again are you still thinking about developer utility or not but there are two other mindsets that i have seen um when it comes to backstage adoption first is the platform first mindset that you know hey i'm i'm doing a bit of uh, you know platform engineering here and there we've got good ci we don't have good cd you know we got everything figured out um feels like the developer portal is missing feels like we don't have a good catalog we don't have good scorecards to measure everything feels like we should be doing a developer portal in our platform so these are the platform first mindsets the second mindset is hey we did a survey recently in our company and we heard it's extremely hard to onboard a new service and it's extremely hard to onboard a new developer it's been 6 months the developer is still struggling um we found out that developers find it overwhelming to know what are the standards in the company so just you know let's say if you're looking to adopt idp close your eyes ask the question why does your company need a backstage or developer portal if the answers are the first section i think we need a catalog rather than hey my developers are struggling with it you belong to the platform first mindset which is not bad by the way i'm just taking a stance that if you're doing it just for your platform not for developer utility it's going to struggle with adoption the project will get defunded you will leave the company it will become a dead project so focus on developer utility and you will see that success so the right mindset is developer first but it's not the only mindset all right so we got the the basics covered let's talk about what are the different phases uh, when we roll out backstage um i feel like an analyst making this i'm a developer building things but yeah this is my best slide ever uh, that i've made so here's is the has a typical journey the very first phase that comes to backstage adoption is the research phase many of you here how many of you are here for the first time in backstage con please raise your hands so this is the first time and most likely you're here to understand the project understand how the industry is getting impacted and you're doing your research you'll probably go back tell and maybe you are an engineering leader but you will tell back to your leaders that hey this is what i've learned maybe we need this maybe we don't need this so the research phase is extremely extremely important if the answer is fear of missing out that everyone's doing hey our competitors are doing backstage or or developer portals we should also be doing if that is the best answer you can come up with please don't do it it's not going to work out do you really really have user problems to you are you struggling with developer effectiveness if the answer is yes that's good that's a good sign um do you also have some platform engineering problems let's say you have built 
great CI, great CD. Developers can build, write code, ship it securely, st uh, you know, like in all the good ways. But they are, they have high cognitive load. They find it overwhelming. Okay, let's let's provide a developer portal for it. Right. So and the the problems that you're thinking about. So the developer problems, right? There's a caveat to it. If the problem only occurs once a quarter, once a year. No, the IDP is not the answer. If the problem is frequently that it can become a daily utility, then yes, that's, the, that's a good sign. So the research phase is why do we need IDP and what does that look like? Once you're done, then, then you need to kick off. You need to set up a team. Um, extremely important that you have a team. And, and here's a general recommendation. Um, you should have one backend, one frontend engineer um, what people also do is they have two full full um, full stack engineers. So and that works very well with backstage since it's all Node.js and TypeScript. So you can have two full stack engineers. You should also have one DevOps engineer because if you're looking to really roll out roll out backstage, it's going to be mission critical. So you should know that it doesn't go down. You know, like if it if it goes down and developers are not impacted. That's a good sign that tells you you have not cracked the developer daily utility. So it shouldn't go down. The DevOps engine will help you out understand how, let's say you're deploying in your AWS and everything is in your AWS. The person will tell you how to securely connect your backstage to AWS and have your secret, secrets you know, uh, stored in, in the environment we're deploying. And you should also have a part-time product manager. Um, um, I've seen some companies do it, especially enterprise, and I'm so happy that there are product managers doing this research. Um, the role can also be fulfilled by a director of engineering, a director of platform. These are also good roles, but it's real work to really prioritize what this IDP will look like, really go back to your users, share it with them, excite them, go back to your stakeholders, and convince why you need more investment. So this is not purely engineering work. So you got the research, and now you kicked off. Here's, here's the adoption flywheel kicks in. So the very first thing you need to do is, you, is find your first problems and your early users. Doesn't have to be 4,000. It can be two teams, 10 developer each, 20 people. They're struggling with one problem. It's common, and they're willing to give you your early feedback. So you have done some research with them. Maybe they have complained that, hey, it's, um, let's say, every time we have to debug some customer issue, we need to raise the Jira ticket, get customer DB access, and then come back. And this whole process takes you know, eight hours. It would be easy if we could just get access for 30 minutes, it times out. Very simple use case. Backstage doesn't come into the play picture. You should also not go to them and say, hey, we are thinking about backstage. Then you have just you know, spoiled, the, spoiled the user. You know, they have the hype. Hey, we should be using backstage and all of that. They don't understand what, what they need to use. Ask them about their problems, how we can make you more productive. So prioritize your first problem and first users. Deliver those. And then access, assess, did it give them value? Or they were just giving you random feedback, random comments on, hey, if you do this, it would be helpful. That happens a lot. Um, I'm a product manager, and that's the worst thing you can do to a product manager. Ask for features and not use it. Um, so <laughs> this is why I said you need a PM to really think about, hey, was there value in the ask that they were having? If the answer is yes, then you've got your users. And they'll be sticky because they asked something and you delivered. So ask for more from the same users and then expand into different user group. And this adoption flywheel continues forever. Um, Spotify has been building backstage for nine years now, right? To 2015 to 2024. Um, all the backstage adopters are still growing, still building use cases. If you believe you can invest six months and, and build your IDP, that's a false perception to have. That's the wrong mindset to have because you'll always be building IDP. IDP is such a critical use. Well, it has a very large um, surface area on how it can impact developers' life. If you remember these three things that developer, developers need, your IDE to write code, 
your Git provider to collaborate, and everything else in IDP. The everything else is a big thing, so your IDP will continue growing, in, uh, growing and uh, you need to continue this loop uh, with them. So here's at the bottom what you're seeing is something that we follow at Hardness. Um, it's pretty st industry standard, and you can copy this to your own IDP rollout. So um, you should aim for about 25% uses in your first three months. The next three to six months should be about 25 to 50% uses. Six to nine, 75, but, but after nine months, you should have 75% 70, utilization. Now, you can decide that, hey, I only want to do it for 1,000 developers this year, even if your company has, let's say, 3,000 developers. That's totally fine. I've seen so many companies come to me and say, hey, I want to do it for 13,000 developers, and it will happen in six months. There's no way it can happen. No matter you're the CTO of the company, you cannot make 13,000 developers change their lifestyle. There's a lot of inertia that kicks in. So don't be in that realm. Um, and, and here's a, I think I've seen this graph before. It's, it's Crossing the Chasm by Jeffrey Moore. Even inside your own company, you have different types of users. There are some early adopters, like maybe these are newer developers who have joined the company and feel very excited about solving developer experience problems. But you'll always have those laggards at the end who don't care about anything that you want to do in this company. So don't get demotivated by, hey, those guys are not giving me good feedback. You need to find your innovators, early adopters, so that you can cross this chasm and expand to more users. Right, so um, now it's time to, for the final section. What does a golden path to adoption looks like. It's going to be very opinionated, and it's for a reason, um, because as I said, if you don't give them a golden path, someone will create a plugin for creating slideshow instead of actually creating slideshow. So don't be that person. Um, that's a foolish idea. Follow this golden path, and the chances of success in adoption will be maximized. Um, you can choose to not believe me, that's complete, completely fine, but this is what I would recommend. Before we go in there, your journey is going to be unique. What, what worked for, let's say, Spotify or Expedia or American Airlines is not going to work for you. Your company has a totally unique culture, a totally unique problem set. Don't try to copy what everyone else did. Right? Um, there are some common problems, though, which, which you can uh, learn from and, and how they solved it. And it's a, it's a very small differentiation, but you, uh, it's good to understand which um, path you want to start in. All, re all roads um, lead to Rome. This is the same idea. But what I've also seen is that some companies are more visibility first, that, hey, I want to solve discoverability issues, and I want to put docs in there and APIs in there and allow developers to see as much as they can. So that is the visibility first customer. Then there is an automation first customer that, um, you know, like, hey, I want to provide ways to create new service, create new infrastructure, perform day two operations. These are all create operations. You can decide which one you are. Here's my take. The barrier to entry for an automation first adopter is much, much low because you can create individual use cases in a progressive manner, right? Um, but since the barrier to entry is so low, it is not sticky. If you've provided one way to create an infrastructure, I'm pretty sure a developer is not creating infrastructure every week, right? But if you do that in the right moment, you will get adoption. So, my take is start with automation a little bit, but you cannot ignore the visibility aspects. Um, and here are the three core pillars of an IDP, right? You, you might have seen, look, look up any, any IDP, hosted, non-hosted. These are the three pillars you will find. There is a catalog to keep track of everything. There is a scorecard which will help you measure what you have in catalog. And there is the workflows which will help you create new things in the catalog and manage the ones you have. The first two are the visibility pillars. The last one is the automation pillar. They have different names so in Backstage. They are called software templates or scaffolder. Um, and the middle one is open source tech insights um, that you can use or build your own. All right, so the final bit, 
what does that opinionated path looks like? Um, I have 12 steps. Um, so let's, let's take a look. The very first thing you need to do is set up your backstage. Ensure that it's secure, it's inside your own environment. Developers can go in there, sign in, and start saying things. Give it a domain name. Give it a nice URL, let's say, I don't know, one idp.mycompany.net or um, you know, some, some, some interesting name so that it, it feels like a product. Build your first automation. Uh, this, you should be doing this on your week one. And, and there's a very simple way to go about it. Ask your platform teams, DevOps, SecOps, App Security. There's many names for, for those teams. What is the most common type of Jira ticket you're getting per month, which results in manual work? It could be getting access to a project, creating a repository, getting access to a DB, whatever it is that's easy to build, but has a very high impact on developer daily utility. Build that automation, stop asking developers to create Jira tickets, have them come over to this portal. They are unblocked, they feel happy, they don't have to create tickets. You have freed yourself up from all those manual numbers that you have, you'll be doing. And this is a very easy way to calculate return of investment here. Imagine you're getting 1,000 tickets a month, every ticket takes 15 minutes to perform, now you have a dollar savings by this creation. So you're also making your stakeholders very happy. But also suggest that it's not just about those day two operations, it's also for creating standards. So let's say you're a platform team, you're approached all the time, hey, give me a CICD pipeline for this application or give me some infrastructure, set up some monitoring for me. Create a software template for them. You know, like anytime a new React developer comes, you should, they should be able to come in here trigger this workflow, get, this, get the new software. Even though this is not a daily utility work, it's suggesting that the developer portal will help with standardization. And then you should be populating your first catalog entries. You should not be putting 100,000 entries on day one. Again, that's not the right approach. Figure out your first customers, ask them where's their source of truth. Most likely it's going to be the Git repositories that they work upon. You can easily create the corresponding YAMLs. The, the, the entries are there. You can choose to create an entity provider. We will come to that later. Um, so create your first tech docs. Um, instead of asking developers to put their stuff in, they don't care. Like they, they, They're happy using Google Docs and Confluence and whatever they're using today. You as a platform team can put your architecture docs on tech docs. That's an easy start. So that developers are coming in to read docs and then they get inspired by, you know, let's say, putting in docs uh, in there as well. So now your developers can start coming in, read documentation, perform some automation, and see their catalog entries. And this is the point where you will hear, hey, I want to start utilizing some backstage plugins. So install your first backstage plugins. Not too many. Again, install, let's say, five plugins at this point, just to help them with some use case uh, that they might benefit from. Create your first scorecard at this point, um, especially to measure catalog readiness. The, the catalog entries that we have, are they healthy? Are the developers putting in the right annotations or they're all not reliable? And when we talk about annotation, this is, I, I believe this truly unlocks a lot of bachelor adopters, is, is writing entity processors to solve the data correlation problem. Let's say you want to add the Jira project ID. Instead of asking your thousands, thousands of developers to add this annotation, if there is a way you can figure this out, write a processor, put all those information in the catalog, don't make them write the YAML. This is also the time when you'll be, you should be building your first plugin to, to, to really provide that unique use case. I have not seen a successful backstage adopter without a custom plugin that they have written. It will take you two hours. If you search on Google, there's this guy uh, who will show up, a uh, four-year-old video. If you don't like it, you can shout that you're not helpful and uh, he'll create a new video for you. You should be using hackathons to invite users and create plugins for them. This is the great Spotify model. You know, it was built by a village. 10 team, 10 code team, but 200 people coming in, contributing plugins, owning their piece. And lastly, you should be creating an adoption dashboard to start seeing the results, seeing the users coming in, and, and then you can just keep on fol following this flywheel, 
more workflows, more catalog items, more plugins, more developer use case, and more adoption. And then, yeah, you'll be, you'll be successful. So that's, uh, that's me. Um, if you have any questions, uh, feel free to ask um, right now. Any questions? Hi, so I'm from <clears throat> Autodesk. We have about 8,000 developers that we'd eventually hope to be using backstage. Um, we started with a, a catalog first approach. So we built things in the catalog that allow users to view synthetics for their entities. We've plugged in into Jenkins and Spinnaker so they can see information from those tools for their entity. The problem though that we have is when we come to developers, they say, great, another place to find information. So I'm wondering what are your thoughts on that and how do you, how do you help them resolve that problem? Because what I think is that, well, if we get everybody on board to doing this, you don't have to do all the other tools. But that of course means you have to get everybody on in the first place. So um, I'm just wondering your thoughts on that dilemma. Yeah, absolutely. And thank you so much for asking. And this is what I meant by you know having the platform first mindset versus developer first mindset. Um, we went ahead, we created a catalog, we created a good platform without really asking developers, what are they missing today? So here's a term that many companies use, um, critical user journey. The information, like we show backstage demo all the time and we show the CI CD tab and we show GitHub Actions in there. Is that really the only place to look at GitHub Actions executions? No, you can always, people are always on their repositories and looking at executions there. So the critical user journey would mean there is some aspect about your developer platform, which is the core infrastructure that developers are not able to see today. Perhaps it's not Spinnaker-based use cases. Perhaps it's, uh, let's say, cloud development environments, if you're using the, those today. How can I get a cloud-based developer environment where I can write code? Um, provide the interface on Backstage. Maybe it's uh, um, some, something else that, that's very, very hard today. So one example would be, if I want to see um, the difference in commits for a service across different environments, where can I go to? And this is such a common developer use case uh, because they always need to know if a customer is falling behind, you know, are they not on the latest version, et cetera. So maybe you can try this use case. Um, again, my recommendation would again be have that developer first mindset, run a recent survey, um, uh, just ask them how productive you feel. And this is something I loved as a Spotify engineer. I used to self-declare how productive I feel. Spotify has a very strong data engineering team and it can track everything, but it still used to ask me how productive I feel. So do that and ask them why don't they don't feel it. And I think that'll be a way to discover such uh, critical user journey and that you can build in Backstage. Any more questions? Right, so um, I'm outside. I'll be here the whole week. Um, there's one more. One more. Yeah, there's one more. Hang on, sorry. Uh, I wanted to ask you when you had your slides there about the uh, journey, you know, and things to do along your journey. So start here, do these things. How did you come up with the order of that journey? For example, on your slide, I think if I recall correctly, you had templates before uh, software catalogs. Yeah. Why? I'm a product manager. I'm incentivized to uh, get revenue in the business. Um, tried that with dozens of customers. This is what worked out. This is what gave customers the confidence that this can really help them solve their problems. We've tried both. Um, the catalog first approach makes them nervous at some point of time that why, have we, why are we putting this effort when there is no traction? 
Um, I think it's a great way to build the first traction, build the first developer, like your user base. Um, and it's low effort. You don't have to, there are banks, I, I remember talking to one bank last in January, um, well actually last Backstage Con, and they were saying, you know, we'll, we'll build Backstage. They're still building Backstage, uh, because they're still solving the whole, hey, do we sync from CMDB? Do we sync our users and groups from HR system? These are all wordless efforts. Ask your developers what they need, and I think this is a low effort. You can build a workflow in a, in a, in a week, one, one template, and uh, yeah, you'll get your first users. Then build the catalog for them. Um, it, it's, a, it's right after the, the step that you got your users, now ask them what's your source of truth for the services and APIs that you work upon. So I think this is one approach. Again, your mileage may vary, and I, I don't think other approaches are bad. This is just for someone who's, who doesn't want to think, and, and uh, yeah, that's just a recommendation.